NBC presents Frank Lovejoy in... Randy Stone. I cover the night beat for the Chicago Stars. Chicago is known as the Windy City, and for good reason. The winds blow by the hour and the week and the month. Off Lake Michigan, up from the Plains country, and down from the heavy timbered north. If you cock your ear, you can hear 27 languages whistling in from the suburbs. Lift your nose and the breezes will fill it with the scent of foreign cooking, the perfume of the shop girls, and the aroma of businessmen's cigars. Push your hand into the wind and you can feel the dampness of the tears. And if you really tilt your head the right way, close your eyes, hold your breath, and listen hard, you can hear the moans of the dying. It was a busy Wednesday night. Barnes on the city desk asked me to lend a hand, and I filled in on rewrite for a couple of hours. I just finished taking a leg man's notes over the headphones when the switchboard buzzed me on a personal. Randy Starr? Now speaking. My name's Richards. I'm a doctor on a receiving ward at Cook County Hospital. Stone, an accident case just came in asking for you, a fellow by the name of John Smith. That's a familiar name. He was hit by a car on a damage street about an hour ago. We've done everything we could. He hasn't got long. That bad? The chaplain just administered last right. John Smith, huh? Yeah. Tell him I'll be right over, Doctor. In my day, I've run into maybe a hundred John Smiths, all of them with a story to tell, a piece of news to peddle, or a lie or two they just give away. But I wondered what kind of a story this particular John Smith wanted to tell me before he died. Dr. Richards met me at the desk. We shook hands and he walked me down to the end of the hall. Poor devil, he's really all cracked up. Well, what uh, happened to him exactly? Accident report says he crossed the Damick Street in front of the Singer Hotel. Taxi was passing a truck. It was dark. Uh-huh. Man in good health might survive such an injury, but not this man. He's had a dangerous point of debility. Hasn't eaten properly for months. A lot of drinking. Terribly neglected. Oh, I see. Here we are. He's in there. Hello. I'm Randy Stone. Yeah. I know. You don't remember me, huh, Randy? John Smith, I'm afraid. Bend I... down, Randy. Take a good look. No, it can't be. John Smith of the obituary columns, Randy. Frank Lyons. Yeah, that's right, Randy. What's left of him? You were just out of the cub ranks in my day. Frank, how did you get it? It's a long story. I'm afraid I haven't got time to tell it. Well, what's on your mind? A guy named Felix Henderson, Randy. Ever hear of him? No. Not many people have. But he's a real story. I asked you to come here because I thought maybe you... I'd write it for you. Sure. When I got out of Northwestern, I said I was going to be the biggest newspaper man in this town. You were once. Yeah, but it didn't last. In 1940, I met Cora, my wife. She was sleek and smart, and just as ambitious as I was. Maybe it doesn't fit in with the general idea, but we got married on one condition that we both go right to the top and stay there it worked too 
But this one night when I met Felix Henderson, Cora and I were having contact. Well, give me the news, Frank. Can you stand me for another five years, honey? Well, that depends. Well, I just signed up for a five-year renewal with the paper. My own time, my own stories, and my own column. I'm going to climb all over this town, and both of us will wind up right on top. Frank and Coraline's against the world. Yeah. Oh, darling, tell me we aren't doing that wrong, playing it this way. Winners are nothing. It is right, isn't it? Well, of course it's right. We've come this far together. So that is the pace too much for you, kid? I... No. No, Frank. You would walk out of... I failed you in any way, wouldn't you? You know it, baby. Same way you would walk out on me if I slipped. So? Here's to no slips, honey. You know, I like being with you. And I like being with you. Mr. Lyon? Oh, yes. My name's Felix Henderson. Could we talk? I've got a story for you. Well, sure. Sit down, sit down. Uh, this is my wife. How do you do? My car is parked up front. Did we talk out there? Well, I did. Okay. Sorry, darling. Business. I'll wait here. <laughs> okay, Henderson, what is it? Lines, I looked you up because they tell me you're a reporter. I always want a story, Henderson. Well, this isn't just a gift. I'm not offering you a rumor or something. This is my car. Okay. Well, I'll give you just three minutes to interest me. It's about old Stan Callahan, the big contractor. They're going to get him on an embezzling charge. Stan Callahan on an embezzling charge? Well, you're crazy, Felix. Yeah? I've got the proof right here in this briefcase. Five hundred. Okay. Let's have it, but it better be straight. In a nutshell, it's this. Here's his bookkeeping records. It's all down here in fine print, how he did it. Oh. Um, can I borrow these? You cannot. You can sit here in the car and make a longhand copy of anything you want. Well, these look like IOUs. They are. Old Stan Callahan's daughter, Patricia, lost a lot of money in, to a gambling syndicate. Wrote them these IOUs. Callahan refused to come across it first, but the gamblers put the pressure on him. So old Stan stole the money from the company and paid off for his daughter. Yeah. Um, where do you fit in, Felix? I'm a private detective. A certain gambling interest asked me to keep an eye on Patricia Callahan just in case she tried to leave town or something. Okay, Felix, this is a story and you'll get your five hundred. wrote the story. My paper printed it. The banner was sued for libel. But Callahan was never indicted. All that stuff Felix Henderson had shown me was so much junk. I was bounced and blackballed and washed up overnight. I tried to tell everybody that it was a frame, but nobody would believe me. What about this Felix Henderson? I never could break it because Felix Henderson vanished. Whoever wanted me broken, whoever it was hired him to frame me, never had the satisfaction of seeing me run out of town with my tail between my legs. Easy. I've hung around here every day since then. Letting... Letting this happen to me. Waiting to get hold of something that that put me up there again. And today I saw it. What? Felix Henderson. Walking down the Damick Street. I tailed him, and when he crossed to go into the Singer Hotel, I followed. Only, with my luck, here I am. A loser again. I'll go and see him for you, Frank. Thank you. Thank you, Stone. Uh, Frank, this uh, wife of yours, would you like me to... No, no, forget her, Randy. She kept our agreement and divorced me a long time ago. 
she's with a new winner now. Henderson, that's who I want you to see. Just Henderson. The clerk at the Singer Hotel told me Mr. Henderson was out and that he wouldn't be back for two hours. So I went back to the Star Morgue file and pulled out the clippings on the old Callahan story. Everything was just as Frank Lyons had said. That is all one could see on the surface. Stan Callahan had died two years ago and left his daughter Patricia as the only heir. I got her address, the Gold Coast apartment, and I went over to have a talk. She was pretty as a postcard and as innocent looking as your sister. Frank Lyons? Oh, the reporter. Yes, that's the one. He's, uh, he's in a hospital right now. I wanted to look into his story a little. Well, after what he wrote about me and my father, you can't expect him to care, can you? Uh, he's, uh, he's dying. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, uh, Miss Callahan, it doesn't make any difference now what happens. It's all over. There are no witnesses here. Tell me, did Lyons ever do anything to your father that would make him want to get even... Frankly, that's what's mystified us. We never met the man before in our lives. I journeyed back to the Singer Hotel to see Felix Henderson. They said he was in the bar. I found him. A tall, lanky, gray-haired guy with a hard face. Yes, I'm Felix Henderson. What's on your mind? Frank Lyons. He told me about the old Callahan story. He told me that you framed him with those papers that you gave him. Well, that wasn't very nice of him. I didn't give Frank Lyons any papers. He made all that up. It's kind of strange you left town at the same time, isn't it? There are a lot of strange things in life. Uh huh. Now, here's the way I see it, Felix. Pat Callahan is clean. You were hired to frame Frank Lyons, probably to keep him from printing some other story. That's how you figure it, eh? I said it. Tell me, how are you fixed for money? Well enough. All right. I'll level with you as much as I can. I'm broke. I need money. Nothing makes any difference anymore. It's all over. So if you've got a couple of bucks, I'll, I'll give you what I know. And the way you gave it to Lyons? No. But you can take it or leave it. I'm not making any apologies for what I'm selling. All right, where can we talk? Up in my room. So we finished our drinks and climbed up the stairs to his room. He looked nervous and a little scared, and frankly, I didn't know what to expect. I walked behind him all the way. He unlocked the door, and we went in. I never can find that light switch. Uh, should be on the right over here. They've got the dumbest reporters in the world in this town. NBC is bringing you Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. Here's a program note. Be sure to hear the new adventure series, Martin Kane, Private Eye, featuring popular stage and screen actor Lloyd Nolan, beginning this Sunday over NBC. And remember your two Friday evening favorites, The Amazing Mr. Malone and The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Yes, Friday evening means top mystery entertainment with the amazing Mr. Malone and the man called X. And beginning Sunday, hear Martin Kane, Private Eye, all on this, your NBC station. And now back to Night Beat and Randy Stone. Death is the most intense drama of all. And no matter what the decorations, gunshot, disease, drowning, or old age, you're never quite prepared to cope with this single spectacle that all men have in common. Maybe that's why I made my promise to Frank Lyons as he lay dying in the Central Receiving Hospital. 
What did I get out of it? A crack on the noggin by a professional bully boy named Felix Henderson. When I came to, a fuzzy glance around his hotel room told me he'd gone. And with him, he'd taken my story for the next edition and Frank Lyon's story for the next eternity. I was going through the shaking head cold water routine when his phone began jumping around on the hook. Hello. Felix? Oh, uh, yeah, this is Felix. Who is this? I'm told you were at my office today. Obviously, you're in town hoping to collect more money from me. Felix, three years ago, I explained you were to stay away from Chicago. Well, uh, a guy gets lonesome. You were paid quite well for your service at that time. There will be no more. I, uh, sold a story to Frank Lyons once. Maybe he'll be in the market again. I think he'd like to know some things. Hmm, no doubt. But your return was for nothing. Yeah? Frank Lyons was critically injured in an accident today, and at this moment is on the brink of death. Understand me. Get out of Chicago, Felix. Get out before I have you picked up. A nameless voice on the telephone obviously belonged to a man who had engineered the frame-up of Frank Lyons. There was no way to find out who he was, even though that was my job and my promise to a dying reporter. So I beat it back across town to Central Receiving Hospital, praying all the way that Frank Lyons would still be alive. He's hanging on, Stone. Been conscious on and off since you left. I don't know how, but he's hanging on. Can I talk to him, Doctor? Sure, why not? As far as he's gone, it doesn't matter. Come on. Thank you. Go ahead, Stone. I'll stand by. Thanks, Doc. Hi. Randy. Yeah, it's me again. I'm like a cub, Frank. You you gotta steer me a little nearer to the story. Did you talk to Henderson? Yeah, but I got nothing out of him. Randy, I'm hanging on here waiting for it. You've got to get it. I'm doing my best. I'm... Don't try to talk right now. Just listen to me. All right. Frank, what did you have on the fire then? What story was so big that somebody would want to frame you out of the business? Frank. Frank! What's that, Stone? Is he gone? About an inch away. Just lapsed again. This time it may be for good. I hung around the hospital for another half hour, hoping he might come too long enough to answer my questions, but he didn't. And then I remembered he'd been married once. It occurred to me that most guys talk to their wives about things, so I decided to look up his ex-wife. She'd married a lawyer named Palmer, and they lived in Glencoe. Took me three-quarters of an hour to get out to her address. A big brown house that was a shade smaller than Soldier's Field. I was asked to wait in the library. I'm Edison Palmer. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Stone. Mrs. Palmer and I have guests tonight. Uh, please sit down. Thank you. Stone, Stone. <laughs> Forgive me, but I don't seem to recall your name. You don't know me, Mr. Palmer. I'm a newspaper man. Newspaper man? Oh, really? I asked the man who answered the door if I could speak with Mrs. Palmer. Oh, and I, I must have misunderstood. I thought you came to see me. Are uh, you an old friend of my wife's? No. I asked because Mrs. Palmer's former husband was a newspaper man also. Wait here, Mr. Stone. I'll get Cora. Addison Palmer went through the double doors at the far end of the room, and three minutes later, Mrs. Addison Palmer came in. Neat, trim, groomed, self-assured. And she was tailored for the kind of house she lived in. And the kind of life she was obviously living. My husband said you came here to see me. Mr. Stone, is it? Yes, that's right. Randy Stone, reporter. I'm I'm on a story. I thought perhaps that you might help me. Well, in what way? 
You were once married to a man named Frank Lyons. Yes, that's true. What exactly do you want, Mr. Stone? You're entertaining tonight. Well, Frank once had quite a reputation for getting stories that no one else was ever able to get. He stepped on a lot of toes. He incurred a lot of anger around the state. Uh, you remember any story he was working on at the time he lost his job that might have caused someone to want to ruin him or shut him up? Mr. Stone, Frank told me nothing of his stories. I seldom inquired. Oh. Well, I just thought you might have something that would help. Why don't you ask him? I hear he's still in Chicago. Oh, Frank was hit by a car today. Right now, he's dying at Central Receiving. Oh, that's too bad. Is that all you have to say? Look, we were married for six years. Some of them were good years and some of them were bad years. We finally parted and that was that. Do I make myself clear? Clear enough, I guess. Just what do you expect me to do, Mr. Stone? Well, just... Oh, get out of the hospital, maybe to hold him in your arms or look at him or talk to him or do anything that would make his dying like this a little easier, that's all. Very well put, Mr. Stone. I'm moved. Oh, that's great, Mrs. Palmer. I'll see you around. Wait, I am moved, Mr. Stone. From my point of view, I wouldn't mind crying for all the good days and all the good years Frank and I had together. It's just that the bad ones keep getting in the way. Both of us arranged that. We wanted more excitement, more sophistication. Cora, dear, our guests are waiting. Cora. Cora, you... You look miserable. It's nothing, Ed. Mr. Stone... I don't know what you've been saying, but I request that you leave my home. I was just leaving, Mr. Palmer. It's sort of cold in here. Wait a minute. What hospital did you say he was in? Central Receiving, under the name of John Smith. I'm going to see him. I hope he's still alive. Cora, what is this? Ed, uh, Frank was hurt in an accident today. Oh, so this is the news you brought in, Mr. Stone. I've got to see him, Ed. Well, Mr. Stone, I don't believe you and I have anything further to discuss. I don't think so. Oh, uh, what paper are you on? Chicago Star. I dislike having my evening upset. I'll do my very best to have you fired, Mr. Stone. Addison Palmer didn't mean anything to me at the moment, and I didn't pay much attention to what he said. All I wanted to do was get out of there as fast as I could. I, I was whipped. There was nowhere to go and nothing to do. I wasn't going to be able to keep my promise to Frank Lyons after all. I was sitting in my car across the street from the Palmer, smoking a cigarette when my first real break showed up. A tall man in a dark suit and coat climbed out of a cab, paid the driver, and headed for Palmer's front door. He didn't see me, but I saw enough of him to recognize a familiar face. It was Felix Henderson. I hurried to the phone booth of an all-night drugstore and put in a call to the paper. I got Phoebe in the file room. Hello. Uh, this is Stone, Phoebe. Oh, yes. Uh, still working on the Frank Lyons thing? Yeah. I just got something that's got to be checked. Sure. Can you tell me who handled the Callahan libel suit? Uh, hold on. Still got the clips out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, two attorneys. Uh, fellas named Martin Jessup and Crane Killer. Oh. If you want to talk to them, they're part of legal firm of Granger, Jessup, Killer, and Palmer. Did you say Palmer? Yeah, sure. Anderson Palmer. Richard's Crease is that one. Lives out in Glencoe in a 20-room bungalow. I know, Bobby. And you ought to see who's on his guest list tonight. <laughs> I drove back to Palmer's place, and even though all the lights were out and all the other cars were gone, I pulled on the doorbell. No one answered, then I noticed the door was open a crack, and I just walked in. There was a light on in the bar, and a man swaying behind it with a glass in his hand. And before I could get to him, he pulled half the bar down as he fell. No, no, Felix, no, no, oh, please. This isn't Felix Henderson. Let go of me. I'm just trying to help you up. Stop fighting or I'll hit you with a bear mug. Oh. Oh, it's 
you, Stone. Yeah, and I should have left you there. Now, come on, I'll walk you over to the sofa. <laughs> now, what was that for? I just don't like you. Now, get out of here. I don't need your help. If you weren't half dead already, I'd break every bone in your face. Now, don't swing at me again or I'll do it. Now, sit down there. I'll make this short. My paper tells me you were part of the legal firm who advised Callahan to bring up the libel suit that ruined Frank Lyons. That means you hired Felix to work the frame. I won't admit anything. You did it to get Frank's wife. Although why you'd want her, I don't know. You knew she'd never leave him while he was on the top, so you kicked him to the bottom. I never had to kick anybody to the bottom. Let them alone and they'll find their own way. Well, that's the way it's going to be in the paper tomorrow. You see, I met Felix Henderson earlier tonight myself, and I also met you on the phone when I was in his hotel room. Oh. Well, you need better proof than that, Mr. Stone. I broke one man for libelous statements. I'm capable of breaking you. Mr. Henderson's testimony, if you should ever locate him again, would be of no value without documentation. There is no such thing. Do you follow me? Yeah, I follow you. I had Frank's story, but I couldn't print it. Nobody could ever print it. So I went back to the hospital to tell Frank about it, if he was still able to listen. Dr. Richards met me. What about five minutes ago, Stone? Sorry. Oh, I, uh... I had something to tell him. If it's any comfort, he died with a smile, Stone. Yeah. His ex-wife came in and held his hand. Do you have anything to do with that? I talked with him. Oh, here she comes now. I'll see you later. Oh. Mr. Stone. It's all over. I... I did what you asked me. So I heard. You see, I was moved, Mr. Stone. Buy me some coffee or something, will you, please? I bought her some coffee and that seemed to help. And after that, I told her what I'd found out and how I'd found it out. She listened good and hard, didn't ask any questions. And a look in her eyes didn't tell me anything either. When I finished, she sighed and made one comment. So Addison Palmer actually went to all the trouble of working Frank's career so he could marry me. Yeah. <laughs> but don't blame poor, ridiculous Ad too much. Blame me. I wanted... Wanted everything all the time. Always took, never gave. It's no way to live. Why did I do it, Mr. Stone? Can you tell me why? Well... Probably because you loved yourself more than anything else in the world. That's common. Loved myself, I despised myself. I could see myself in the mirror, watch myself working not only my own life, but everybody else's. Somehow I couldn't seem to stop. Uh huh. The biggest laugh, though, is on Addison Palmer. Wanting me. Me. That bad. It's like wanting to get smallpox. I won't argue with you. I wish I'd get hit by lightning or something. Well, you're not the type that attracts lightning. No, I guess not. I don't know why I talk like this in front of you. Maybe I'm just the voice of your conscience. I don't have one. I can't change myself, Mr. Stone. I am what I am. Well, thanks for the coffee. Oh, no, sure, sure. As I said before, I don't know what to say to a woman like you. Don't say anything. So long, Mr. Stone. See you in the papers. And there it was. A story I found and I couldn't print. But I made a promise to myself. The next time I ran into a story, a good big one, I'd print it and slug Frank Lyon's byline on it as a sort of going-away gift. Well, I don't know if you can see a moral in it, but I can. 
Tomorrow. Well, life has so many little ways of catching up with you, of balancing the budget. Right when you think you got it licked, and right when you figured you've outsmarted the whole world, out of the blue, you come face to face with yourself. <coughs> Copy, boy. <laughs> was sued for libel, but Callahan was never indicted. All that stuff Felix Henderson had shown me was so much junk. I was bounced and blackballed and washed up overnight. I tried to tell everybody that it was a frame, but nobody would believe me. What about this Felix Henderson? I never could break it because Felix Henderson vanished. Whoever wanted me broken, whoever it was hired him to frame me, never had the satisfaction of seeing me run out of town with my tail between my legs. Easy. I've hung around here every day since then, letting, letting this happen to me, waiting to 
could get hold of something that, that put me up there again. And today I saw it. What? Billy Tennyson walking down the Damick Street. I tailed him, and when he crossed to go into the Singer Hotel, I followed. Only, with my luck, here I am. A loser again. I'll go and see him for you, Frank. Thank you. Thank you, Stone. Uh, Frank, this uh, wife of yours, would you like me to... No, no, forget her, Randy. She kept our agreement and divorced me a long time ago. She's with a new winner now. Henderson, that's who I want you to see. Just Henderson. The clerk at the Singer Hotel told me Mr. Henderson was out and that he wouldn't be back for two hours. So I went back to the Star Morgue file and pulled out the clippings on the old Callahan story. Everything was just as Frank Lyons had said. That is all one could say. Did we talk out there? Well, I did. Okay. Sorry, darling. Business. I'll wait here. <laughs> okay, Henderson, what is it? Lyons, I looked you up because they tell me you're a reporter. I always want a story, Henderson. Well, this isn't just a gift. I'm not offering you a rumor or something. Uh, this is my car. Okay. Well, I'll give you just three minutes to interest me. It's about old Stan Callahan, the big contractor. They're going to get him on an embezzling charge. Stan Callahan on an embezzling charge? Well, you're crazy, Felix. Yeah. I've got the proof right here in this briefcase. Five hundred. Okay. Let's have it, but it better be straight. In a nutshell, it's this. Here's his bookkeeping records. It's all down here in fine print, how he did it. Oh. Um, can I borrow these? You cannot. You can sit here in the car and make a longhand copy of anything you want. Well, these look like IOUs. They are. Old Stan Callahan's daughter, Patricia, lost a lot of money in, to a gambling syndicate. Wrote them these IOUs. Callahan refused to come across it first, but the gamblers put the pressure on him. So old Stan stole the money from the company and paid off for his daughter. Yeah. Um, where do you fit in, Felix? I'm a private detective. A certain gambling interest asked me to keep an eye on Patricia Callahan just in case she tried to leave town or something. Okay, Felix, this is a story, and you'll get your 500. So I wrote the story. My paper printed it. The banners. In my day, I've run into maybe a hundred John Smiths, all of them with a story to tell, a piece of news to peddle, or a lie or two they just give away. But I wondered what kind of a story this particular John Smith wanted to tell me before he died. Dr. Richards met me at the desk. We shook hands, and he walked me down to the end of the hall. Poor devil, he's really all cracked up. Well, what uh, happened to him exactly? Accident report says he crossed the Damick Street in front of the Singer Hotel. Taxi was passing a truck. It was dark. Uh -huh. Man in good health might survive such an injury, but not this man. He's at a dangerous point of debility. Hasn't eaten properly for months. A lot of drinking. Terribly neglected. Oh, I see. Here we are. He's in there. I'm Randy Stone. Yeah, I know. You don't remember me, huh, Randy? John Smith, I'm afraid. Bend down, Randy. Take a good look. No, it can't be. John Smith for the obituary columns, Randy. Frank Lyons. Yeah, that's right, Randy. What's left of him? 
You were just a little cub ranks in my day. Frank, how did you get it's it? It's a long story. I'm afraid I haven't got time to tell it. Well, what's on your mind? A guy named Felix Henderson, Randy. Ever hear of him? No. Not many people have. But he's a real story. I ask you to come here. NBC presents Frank Lovejoy in... Randy Stone, I cover the night beat for the Chicago Star. Chicago is known as the Windy City, and for good reason. The winds blow by the hour and the week and the month. Off Lake Michigan, up from the Plains country, and down from the heavy timbered north. If you cock your ear, you can hear 27 languages whistling in from the suburbs. Lift your nose and the breezes will fill it with the scent of foreign cooking, the perfume of the shop girls, and the aroma of businessmen's cigars. Push your hand into the wind and you can feel the dampness of the tears. And if you really tilt your head the right way, close your eyes, hold your breath, and listen hard, you can hear the moans of the dying. It was a busy Wednesday night. Barnes on the city desk asked me to lend a hand, and I filled in on rewrite for a couple of hours. I just finished taking a leg man's notes over the headphones when the switchboard buzzed me on a personal. Randy Starr? Yes, speaking. My name's Richards. I'm a doctor on a receiving ward at Cook County Hospital. Stone, an accident case just came in asking for you, a fellow by the name of John Smith. That's a familiar name. He was hit by a car on a damage street about an hour ago. We've done everything we could. He hasn't got long. That bad? The chaplain just administered last rites. John Smith, huh? Yeah. Tell him I'll be right over, Doctor. Because I thought maybe you... I'd write it for you. Sure. When I got out of Northwestern, I said I was going to be the biggest newspaper man in this town. You were once. Yeah, but it didn't last. In 1940, I met Cora, my wife. She was sleek and smart, just as ambitious as I was. Maybe it doesn't fit in with the general idea, but we got married on one condition, that we both go right to the top and stay there. It worked, too. But this one night when I met Felix Henderson, Cora and I were having a cocktail. Well, give me the news, Frank. Can you stand me for another five years, honey? Well, that depends. Well, I just signed up for a five-year renewal with the paper. My own time, my own stories, and my own column. I'm going to climb all over this town, and both of us will wind up right on top. Frank and Cora Lyons against the world. Yeah. Oh, darling, tell me we aren't doing it wrong, playing it this way. Winners are nothing. It is right, isn't it? Well, of course it's right. We've come this far together. As long as the pay's too much for you, kid. I... No. No, Frank. You would walk out of... I failed you in any way, wouldn't you? You know it, baby. Same way you'd walk out on me if I slipped. So? Here's to no slips, honey. You know, I like being with you. And I like being with you. Mr. Lyons? Oh, yes. My name's Felix Henderson. Could we talk? I've got a story for you. Well, sure. Sit down, sit down. Uh, this is my wife. How do you do? My car is parked up front. 